We are already almost in the home stretch of the inaugural PWHL season. We've got you covered here on Hockey North. Will Toronto ever lose again? Their winning streak just keeps going and going. You have Ottawa. They picked up a big win versus Montreal, which is huge in that battle for fourth place and the last playoff spot. And with MPP injured, Montreal's offense struggled. And oh yeah, Hockey Canada released their roster for the World Championships. So let the debates begin. What's up, everybody? Rob Pizzo, Haley Salvian, back with you for Hockey North. And we got a lot to get to. Let's jump mm -hmm. right in. But we want to talk about something that happened off the ice. And, you know, the, the World Hockey Championships just less than a month away now. I can't believe that oh another gosh. international break is already yeah. coming up. Uh, Hockey Canada releasing their roster. Some familiar names, some unfamiliar names. And mm -hmm. now we've got the whole PWHL season to kind of evaluate some of these players as well. So everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. Uh, what jumped out to you when you saw the roster? Uh, some of the newer faces, uh, Nicole and Julia Gosling, they are cousins and they're going to be making their world championship debuts together, which is a nice story, but they're also both coming off really strong uh, college seasons. Nicole is a great defender for Clarkson University and then Julia is a forward at St. Lawrence. So those are two kind of new faces to get to know if you're looking for, you know, some college players and, and the new players to watch out for. I think one of the bigger surprises when we're looking at the PWHL, the stats and the standings. Jessie Eldridge, she was ranked top 10 in league scoring. She's on New York, she's not on this roster. Another New York player, Kareen Schroeder, also didn't crack this roster and she's been arguably the best goaltender. She has excellent stats in the PWHL, had the first ever win against Toronto in the first ever game. If people remember, she was unbelievable and she's carried that through the whole season. Um, but I think that just goes to show how hard it is to make Team Canada, especially at the goaltender position. I think we are on a four show streak of talking yeah. about Toronto streak, <laughs> which has gone up to nine games. Mm -hmm. And it's funny when you're You've got a league that's starting out the inaugural season. Everything's a record. So every time they win, yeah. it's like a new record yeah. uh, winning yeah. streak. They've allowed just 11 goals during this streak. It's it's getting a little crazy now, isn't it? Yeah, and then when you talk about the streak, Kristen Campbell herself is on a 10-game win streak. Yeah. And she's been the one leading the charge for all that. So Kristen Campbell's only allowed 11 goals against. And she's got three shutouts in that streak now. So she's just been, you know, unbelievable in the crease for Toronto, which has been such a change. Obviously, they had a difficult start to the season and Kristen took a little bit of time to get comfortable in the yeah. league. But there's just so many things going right for Toronto right now. They've been very hard to beat, obviously, based on the win streak. You've got Natalie Spooner, who stays hot. But, you know, Sarah Nurse is, you know, getting on the board more consistently now. Blair Turnbull's riding a point streak. Emma Malte was tied for the league lead in points in February. I believe she has nine points in her last eight games. Um, Hannah Miller has three goals in her last two. You know, all the different players from up and down the lineup are getting in on the action, and that's what's made Toronto really difficult to beat, as well as the goaltending and just this kind of physical, gritty, defensive style of play that, that can be really hard to beat. And then you got Renata Foss and Jocelyn yeah. Rock. I'm tired watching how much ice time they're getting. It's, it's ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah, they're so impressive. And this is why when everyone was so surprised that Toronto went with Jocelyn LaRock at number two, and we can relitigate that. We can revisit it as, we as often as we want, right? <laughs> right? And, and you know, at first when things weren't going well for Toronto and Alina Mueller's playing really great in Boston, there's a lot of people of like, okay, well, why didn't they, why'd they do this? Why did they go for the 35 year old stay at home defender over the young gun, like, elite number one center and Alina Mueller. And this is the reason. There is nobody who plays more meaningful minutes in big games than Jocelyn LaRock and Renata Fast. So when they had Renata Fast as one of their top three signings, it only made sense for Toronto to take Jocelyn LaRock because Renata, excellent defender on her own. Jocelyn, amazing defender on her own. Together, they are like the best D pair in the world. They eat minutes, power play, uh, penalty kill, even strength, like those two can do it all. So this nine game winning streak has catapulted Toronto into a tie for first place with mm -hmm. Montreal. And when you have a 24 game season, that the end of the season, the home stretch- One third, it's over a third of the season. It's crazy that we're actually talking about battling for the last playoff spot. That's mm. exactly what's happening now that we know the playoff format and you've got Ottawa picked up a big win uh, yeah. this week. And if they're the team that creeps into that fourth spot, that last playoff spot, mm -hmm. 
Could they surprise people in the playoffs? I think it's tough because we're talking about them going up against like a Toronto or yeah. a Montreal and both of those teams have shown more consistently their ability to put games away because that's been Ottawa's problem, right? Is they have all these really good pieces and they drive offense and their expected goals are excellent and they don't allow a ton of shots against, but they can't bury those chances. So I need to see a little bit more finish from Ottawa before I can say like, look out, like we might have an upset here. However, I do think that there's a lot of those kind of underlying metrics that are suggesting that Ottawa has played very good hockey. They're just not seeing results and, and maybe they're going to start to see that more consistently. I think we would need to mention too that they beat a Montreal team that was out, that was without Marie-Philippe Poulin, which is a significant subtraction from a roster yeah. when we're talking about the best player in the world, but you can only beat the team that's in front of you and, and Ottawa did it and they did it in a way that we haven't really seen consistently throughout the season, which is offensive touch and finishing ability. So yeah, I think they could, if they could get in, they could mix it up. I feel like my money is still on Boston taking that fourth seed, but I think it's going to be fun that we're going to have a battle for that fourth spot. Real quick, before we move on from Montreal, Michaela Grant meant to signing as a reserve player. Your thoughts on this move? I think it was only a matter of time before yeah. somebody picked up Michaela Grant Menace, and I think it could end up being a really savvy move by GM Danielle Sovejo because, you know, the trade deadline's coming up on March 17th. That's the roster freeze date in the PWHL, and without the ability to trade draft picks, I don't know how busy that trade deadline day is going to be. I don't think it's going to be a big frenzy like we saw in the NHL because, if you want to get a player in, you've got to send a meaningful player out. And I think what Montreal did was go and get somebody who can bring offense to the lineup. We've seen a lot of players get opportunity on the top line with Poulin, whether it's um, Gabrielle David, Melody Daou, um, Maureen Murphy, like lots of changes and opportunity in that Montreal lineup. And I think Michaela's going to get a good opportunity to to kind of produce and, and play for Montreal off that reserve list this season. And again, it was only a matter of time before somebody picked her up. So you mentioned March 17th, that weekend, of course, the trade deadline, but there's still hockey to be played and we've got you covered here on CBC. It all kicks off on Saturday, New York in Minnesota. Puck drop for that one, 3.30 Eastern time. Then on Sunday, you've got Toronto taking on Montreal and that one goes at 12.30 Eastern time. You can watch those games on CBC as well as CBC Gem. Haley, thank you as always thank for doing you. this. We're gonna leave you with this. I don't know how you watch PWHL games, but this group of fans really brings new meaning to fanatics. Today, we're also gonna be partying it up inside the bar Peaches, which has been welcoming PWHL fans, in particular Toronto fans, and that's where our Anastasia Busis has taken in the game. As a gay kid growing up, I don't think I could ever imagine a sports bar like this. We are having a blast. You can barely find a seat. Hey, the PWHL is here to stay. We're halfway through the season and people are still showing up. People who aren't here, they should be because honestly, it's just the energy and everything is so exciting. It's as if we are actually at the Matami. The atmosphere feels like a Maple Leafs playoff game on a Saturday afternoon. I think there's been this pent up demand amongst women and families to watch women's sports. And I'm so happy that we're, we're here. My kids are here at the beginning of this like new movement. I would say the best word to describe the vibe when people are watching the games is just love. Yeah. There's high fives, there's yelling, there's screaming, people there's are... hugging. It's so wonderful. <laughs> it's starting to become a bit more competitive and people, you know, we have... are not just coming for the game, they want Toronto to win. That game, that second game, when it was literally packed in here, and then that has helped pave a way for like every other game. So even like on like a Tuesday night, like we'll still be packed in here. And it's wing night. <laughs> and it's wing night.